In today's video, we're going to be painting up a lizard folk skeleton. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to start off here now, is we're going to start off with skeleton bone to be doing uh, the skeleton, of course, of our lizard folk skeleton warrior here. Um, now, I have uh, primed this model, model beforehand uh, using some uh, Vallejo Grey Primer just to make the paint a bit easier to stick on and uh, I know I haven't been uh, as clear about that I've been priming my model so I, I'm trying to make an effort to make sure I remember to say that uh, I prime my models before painting them when I do so of course we just want to go in to all our bony areas of our lizard folk guy here and just try and get them all now there is quite a lot on this model uh, especially hidden beneath all the sort of ragged clothes and stuff there so we want to make sure we get a good coverage over all of that with our skeleton bone okay so once we have all our bones all painted up what we're going to do now is we're going to come in with army green i'm going to be using army green to be painting up all the tattered robes that our uh, skeleton has on him so we want to now there's quite a bit uh, all tattered all over the place since it's uh all so old and sort of basically rotting all off him so make sh make sure you take a good look all over the model trying to get all those little bits of uh, tattered clothing as much as you can and of course trying to avoid the areas that we've been painting over in the first place with our skeleton bone and just making sure to keep it nice and clean as much as we can avoiding all those areas as i said before that we've already painted over now there is quite a lot of um tears and stuff on these robes so just make sure you have a good look over all the model trying to find all the little bits so once we have all our green robes dried up we're going to come in now with some oak brown and we're only going to be using the oak brown to be painting up just the inside of the shield that our uh, lizard skeleton has on him so just inside here we want to make sure we get a nice good coverage over the whole lot trying to avoid as much as we can the areas that we've already painted but if you do don't worry about it just wait for it to dry and come back with our original color to tidy up okay so now that we have that all done we're going to come in now with some vallejo tinny tin and we're going to be using this to be painting up uh, a lot of the armor and the inside of our shield that we have here now i'm going to be painting it just on the inside it may be a little bit hard to see on the camera but there's sort of like a, a edging to his armor and his shield and I'm just painting the inside of that with the tinny tin. I'm trying to trying to just get it on the inside here. I'm not, although I'm not worrying too much about spilling over because we're going to come back in with another color um, afterwards to clean up those edges. And then don't forget to do the inside of the shield as well while you're doing that. Okay, now that we have all that done and dried up, make sure it's all dried up. As we're going to come in now with gun metal and that's why we're going to wait for uh, make sure it's definitely dry before we do it because we're going to come in with the gun metal and i'm going to be doing it on his boots but all that trimming that i said we left uh, just before we're going to be coming in with our gun metal and doing the edges around that uh, just like you can see here just carefully going around the edge now i'm more using the side of my brush than the actual tip of my brush uh, on these sort of bigger stroked areas to try catch as much as I can and we're just wanting like a good outline of the uh, gun metal here just to really set it apart I think it's going to stand out quite nicely once we have our model finished up and it's also going to uh, with our tinny tin it's going to make it sort of like it's old rusted sort of armor not the shiny brand new stuff on a skeleton I think is what's going to fit better for this then once we have all of our gunmetal painted up, we're going to come in now with Monster Brown. And we're going to be using the Monster Brown to paint up the uh, belt that he's wearing and just the little bit of the sheath of our uh, sword here on his side that he has. A little bit hard to see there, but I'm just coming in with a fine detail brush trying to just get the straps of the uh, leather belts there that he's got. I'm trying to avoid any of the areas that we've already painted up remember if you accidentally do go over the areas to just wait for it to dry and then come back over with the original paint where you've messed up okay so now we have his belts painted up and I move on now with dirt spatter 
and we'll be using the dirt spatter to be painting the base of our lizard folk here um, so just being careful to avoid the bottom pieces of the miniature just like the toes and stuff and he's got one foot raised up on this area that's uh, protruding out so what I'm going to be doing is rather than painting all that uh, brown as well uh, I'm going to be leaving that as uh, just blank for now and we're going to be painting that up uh, a different color uh, later on okay so now that that's dried up and painted we're going to come in now with castle gray and we're going to be doing the little raised piece we've just missed out on our uh, a lizard folk here from doing the ground and there's also just another little stone just on the back of him just here and we just want to make sure we get that as well and then now we want to come on to the big rock that what well, I'm not sure if it's a rock but I'm going to be painting it as a rock to differentiate it from the whole uh, brown base that we've done just before but if you want to go ahead and not have this a rock and just have this as a bit more of the outcropping then go right ahead and do that Okay, so now once we have the base done, what we're going to be doing now is we're going to be moving on with some known oil. And now we're going to be using the known oil wash to be going over all our metal pieces of our miniature. So that's a sword, the shield, all the armor. And we want to be giving it a nice good coat with the known oil. And uh, anywhere that it starts pulling up really badly, uh, you can come in with your brush just after giving it a quick wipe off and just touch it to that area where it's pulled up and it'll immediately suck up all that wash and then once all the known oil is all dried up we're going to move on now with some agrax earthshade i'm going to be using the agrax earthshade to do the entirety of the rest of our lizard folk here so we want to go over all the the bone and all our tattered robes uh, even part of the the base as well we all want to get in this uh, agrax earthshade um, the agrax earthshade is going to really tie it all in together and make it look like this uh, sort of really nasty uh, skeleton that's basically just risen up from the dead is sort of the effect I'm going for which is why um, I'm going for the brown sort of dirty look and um, what I'm doing slightly different to what we just what I just said with the known oil is in the certain places like uh, in the rib cage and in the eye sockets and stuff I'm actually going to leave that really heavy wash in there because I want it to to really sit in there and have a uh, really deep pools of the uh, agrax earth shade in there and then once that's all completed and dried up what we're going to do now is i'm going to come in with dry rust which is an effect paint and what i'm going to be doing here is i'm going to be placing it on a dry brush and i'm just going to be dry brushing it over a bunch of the areas of uh, the metal on our miniature just sort of dabbing it on trying to make it sort of as random as possible and um, making sure I get a good covering over it too because I want this to be a really sort of old worn uh, bits of metal that he's either cobbled together or he had when, he, when our lizard man died here and he's been wandering around in caves and whatever for so long that even his armor and weapons are starting to rust so giving it a sort of heavy dosage but not too much that's why I'm going with the dabbing to make it a bit more random than if we were to paint it on basically With that all done guys we have now completed painting up a lizard folk warrior from reaper miniatures and uh now skeleton warrior i should say too <laughs> um but you can see here that it was just a really easy miniature to paint up and you could really knock out a whole heap of these if you want a big uh, lizard folk uh, skeleton horde coming at you you can really paint up a lot of these very quickly um and just adding in the the rust effects on our miniature has really taken it to the next level to making it look sort of this old uh, skeleton that's been crawling around in caves for a long time and 
Um, I thought we'd vary it up with something a little bit quick and easy to do. So if you want to follow along, this would be a nice, easy video to do. Or you just want to watch me paint, I'm also happy with that as well. And I think with that, that's going to about do it for our video again. I'd just like to thank you all for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, uh, please consider subscribing and checking out some of my other videos. But with all of that said, guys, I'll see you in the next one.